Welcome to From A to Z with your hosts, Zombie Shepherd and Zero X Zephi, doing our Avagachi thing. And uh, yeah, man, it's been a it's been a crazy week. Love in October, always, you know. Indeed, indeed. October's got to be nuts for me. It just can't be easy. It's always got to be crazy <laughs> and hectic. I'm still waiting for October. Like I just like realized it was October, mm. and I'm like, we better have some fucking October because, yeah, I don't I don't need a spooky. Had a little day. jump last couple of days. At least today, you know, looks like BTC and ETH are up at least. So we'll see. Maddox up. Maddox up to like eighty eight. I saw. I saw I earlier. Saw that. So we got a little up. Things aren't all down. We're good. That's true. Um, we got we got a lot of macro factors that are potentially working in our favor. Oh yeah, like what? You, well, the UN's going. Hey, the Fed, you need to stop raising interest rates and destroying everything around the entire globe for your own personal gain. To which we say more interest rate hikes, probably. Oh, but if we don't, that's when we'll see like a Bitcoin reversal because people are going to flood back into those scarcity assets you know what i mean sovereign debt crisis after sovereign debt crisis is going to drive a lot of people not just to the dollar but to crypto too i think anyway yeah for sure too, too deep for the intro too deep for the intro <laughs> too deep for the intro just jump right <laughs> in the shit fuck it two feet right in the market no i mean uh i don't disagree though i mean to to kind of shift it to keep on track but also shift NFTs are pumping, man. And they are. the fact that NFTs are pumping shows you that speculation has a little bit of a bubble. Uh, you know what I mean? Like we've seen ENS pumping, we've seen NFTs pumping, and you know, if they say they say that like you're going to see the crypto market move before you see the traditional market move. It's kind of like an early indicator because when you see the crypto market start to move, you see people spending speculative money and that's probably the most high risk, but also the most um, um, high return, high risk, high return. So sure. it's why you see historically, you know, which historically is only less than 15 years, but historically you've seen the crypto market start to pump before the traditional market and NFTs are a new market. So I'm wondering if the indication of NFTs pumping is an indicator that we will see crypto market pump right behind that. And then a pump of traditional stocks. I don't think we'll have a pump of traditional stocks until they print more. Um, but yeah. Yep. <laughs> or the knowledge that printing will come <laughs> soon. I think that will be the case. And I think things like Hurricane Ian causing billions worth of damage is going to, I mean, sure, there's a fund, you know, we've got FEMA funds for that. But at a certain point, as we turn up our world natural disasters knob, we're just going to have a lot of these and it's going to start getting really expensive. We're going to have to print money to fix them. So that's just a matter of time. (laughs) (laughs) Wait. But yeah, so what I was saying before we started the show, uh, I was reading a tweet thread by Zeneca, and he was saying that roadmaps are not that great for NFT projects because people want speculation and if they know what's happening and they're sure about what's happening, they can't mm. speculate. They can measure. That's exactly what I was saying a couple of weeks ago on the episode. Um, I wonder if the flocking or I wonder if the, the pumping in the NFT markets is less of a speculative investment and more of like a safety m- maneuver. Because art has those you know investment exceptions. It's definitely clearly not a security kind of certainty to it. Whereas everything else is in this zone is of regulatory though? unclarity. Is it? But That's everything else is for sure. It, no, what I mean is as a, you know, art has been a safe haven for rich people, but it's also kind of got that like stigma of money laundering. And when you turn art into 
this crypto thing and and people are obviously using it in that way then you actually paint a big huge target on that that i don't think people are gonna say that's a good point yeah i don't think the sec is gonna say oh we can't fuck with this it's art they're gonna they're gonna say oh no you just turned yourself into a security mr monkey man and we're coming for you They're just going to need more people than there are crypto holders to enforce this nonsense. So I don't know. (laughs) It's never going to work. It's never going to work. I mean, that's the great part of it. You know, this is the same thing as unfortunately, it's going to be the same thing. Like I've said before, like with what happened with Napster, where like they shut down Napster or they, you know, sued him into submission where now it's a paid service. But essentially you turned, you know, digital piracy into a business model for other people so like it's not like spotify is not stealing and ripping off artists you just like willingly sign up to be stolen from yeah yeah it's the same model it's just we'll give you a few pennies to sign here and here and here and here and then we need your soul and your firstborn and i mean that's you know i've been doing a lot of research you know i want to put out some new music i'm gonna have to make a deal with the devil i'm doing all the research i can I just don't see Web3 solutions that are going to do it for me. I'm going to have to go with Web2 solutions. I'm going to have to go with these traditional distribution methods. I'm going to for sure be experimenting with Web3. I just that's don't good. know what that's going to look like. My main concern being, and I, I'm still trying to research into this, but my main concern being that like, if I upload to Audius and... I use a, you know, traditional distribution. Will I be in some kind of like compliance issue with myself? Almost certainly. Right. I would bet that services like Spotify would request some sort of an exclusivity. And if you are not willing to give it, then they might charge more or something. Well, I, I mean, it's not exclusivity because so the distribution companies are things like DistroKid, CD Baby, Ditto, one RPM. There's all these little companies, um, but they get you on Apple and Spotify and TikTok and Instagram and everything. They even get you I on see. Shazam and Siri, so that people can just ask, "What is this song?" and Siri can okay. tell them. So, so then, would there be an issue with those people if you were to also release some of this material on Web three? That's, that's where the I'm issue would be. Really is out. like. I, I guess, you know what? Actually, I, it's not going to be a problem in one way. So you don't have... when you, I just realized this thinking about it because I've been doing so much research that a lot of these questions are just like, I need to connect the dots. But so a lot of these distribution services are uh, non-proprietary. What's the word I'm looking for? You you don't have to... You can release through other people. Open source? Uh, no, no. Um if I wanted to take my music away from them, I could redistribute it with somebody else. So I'm okay. not signing any kind of like exclusivity, even with the I distribution see. service. I guess what I'm more concerned with is like, so there's like, there's ISRC, which is the number attached to your song. And then there is basically like a digital code. And I don't understand how this works exactly. Like, what, you know, but there's a code in every song. And that is how uh digital rights managements and dma dmca are able to take down your music from youtube and things like that because basically it senses that code it knows the song's been used Uh. and some songs they just trigger a payment and other songs trigger a takedown depending on the deal that youtube or twitch has with that particular record company see um Uh. So what I'm worried about is if I release my song on one distribution service and then I release it on Audius, will there be some kind of like problem with takedown where either Audius is trying to take down my traditional distribution or flagging it as if it was a duplicate as a copy or something. Yeah. Right. Hmm. So it may be that I even need to think differently about it and maybe do like remixes in web three services. So like I can release the main song traditionally and then it's like oh you can trace down these like kind of rare remixes through audius or sound.xyz or mix or whatever 
I mean, I've had a few of them DM me and try to get me to use their thing, and I'm just like, it, it's the it's the distribution that I need, and sure. and more importantly, as I've said many times, it's the the royalty collection, which is called publishing rights. A lot of these distribution services don't do that for you, so you still have to pay someone else to go collect the money for you. In a lot of cases. It's all so Web three is just not there yet. Complicated. Web three is nowhere near it because I like the idea of the remixes though, and I'll bet you if you reached out to the Lens team, they might even have some insight on that sort of publishing on Web three approach because right. it seems like they're trying to encourage it anyway. They've got to have some insights. Right. I mean, the good thing about copyright is that it is real from the moment. Like copyright is yours from the moment of creation. So that is also tying into AI and stuff. That is also why like AI actually owns its own art. You don't own it and open AI doesn't own it or whatever service mid journey or whatever. They don't own the art. The AI owns its own art. It created it and therefore it has mm. property ownership of its IP. It's just if that. we assume that it's got the rights of a human, of an individual, we exactly. already say corporations Under copyright do. Copyright so. law, it doesn't say you have to be a human. It just says the entity that creates it owns it. Uh, but like, OpenAI, and OpenAI says this in their fine print as much. Like they say exactly that. But they also are taking that role of like parent to child where they're like, well, the AI can't exactly think for itself. So we're just going to go ahead and say that we own this, uh, you know, ah, right. Cause which why not? Right. Why, Free value, which is why they <laughs> say you can do whatever you want with it, but we can also request that you take it down if we don't like what you do with it, because technically they don't have I any see. more rights than you do, except, you, they have you on the terms of agreement. They're running the website. <laughs> right. I got gotcha. you. Yep. Dang. Well, all a lot of deep stuff there too. Stuff, man. I'm really, you know, and I mean, it's all, that's why we're here, right? NFTs and crypto and all that stuff. It's all this. And that's why I'm here specifically is intellectual property and digital rights management and all that stuff, you know, and I'm got to dive in to learn it. Web three articles on the crap, and I've been so deep in the in the weeds and busy that like I'm doing a lot more research than writing. So some good knowledge will come out of it, though. I'm gonna be yes, a music. It's usually the struggle. Yeah, you are, and that that's gonna be valuable to have because I don't know of any of those in this space. You know, I know we've got Phase, we've got G DJ Super Paul, we have some music creators, some producers, but we don't have any of the that particular we're expertise. not in the level of i guess like the big music nft people you know like Koopa we should Koopa be or uh i think blau. we will be you know what i mean yep but even blau so i don't know is koopa troopa he does the sound xyz right um I i'm not that's sure his thing but so blau does royal Royal is not a Web3 company yet. Like Royal is trying to bridge that gap and they are focusing on the real world side of it. So they're working with the, you know, they're working to make it compliant and working to make it legal. So they're building the bridge. They're kind of like the Coinbase, I guess you could say, of the music world because it seems like it. Yeah. He's trying to build that bridge from the traditional side to reach into Web3. But I would trust nobody more to do it because the dude's been in the music industry for 10 plus years. He was got a financial a following. expert in college. He's been into crypto, you know, since 2013, 2014. So the dude knows his stuff on both sides of the chain, you know, the chain and the music industry. And that's what we need establishing, you know, the new protocols, the new standard operating procedures for music. Exactly. And three. That's perfect. So I, I do like what he's got going there. And I mean, that would actually be the dream, you know? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I don't want to build a record label. That's not my dreams. I just want to like play music and make art and do things. And sure. like, so that's, you know, and Zim Timo, like I want to make films and do animation and have fun. So like my dream would basically be like to get picked up 
by somebody like Royal or somebody who's going to really do like that part of it, um, the business part of it more, because I don't want to have to do that. You know? <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That but makes I sense. I am doing it. Um, yeah. Well, I'd like to pivot back to uh, some of the notes that we had prepped. But unfortunately, our first one up says all in capital letters. Oh. All auction pieces have been distributed. And on this monitor, I have the safe open with 38 pending <laughs> transactions. So that's not quite true yet. <laughs> 38 but pieces coming. have not been sent yet. Oh, but they're a lot coming. of those are... Uh... Should I say it? I don't think all of those are summit pieces, right? Some of those are bonuses. A few of them are, yeah, ones that, a couple different bonuses. A few of them are actually old prizes that we owed people from between the Guild Summit and the Artist Summit. We still Where there was a raffle in there. Jesus. There was a raffle in there. I took care of anyone that I had addresses for, so we're good there. There's just a couple that need minting, and then we can send those. The rest of the stuff in here is Artist Summit. And yes, the bonus pieces, there's three surprise drops, three surprise, uh, I guess, badges. Anybody who filled out the feedback form during the event or after the event, there is a, a poet for that or a badge for that. Anyone who won a piece, won, an, won a piece from the auction, there's a badge for that. And anybody who boosted the server during the event or prior to the event, there's a badge for that. Nice. And they're all collabs. And the one, the artist, the artist summit auction winner badge, the premium appreciation badge was a, a fun collaboration. I was working with contact and phase on that one. So it's animated. It's got some music. It's a winner. I like it a lot. So Hell yeah. keep your eye out for those. Those are coming. The, uh, the attendance badge, which came from the, the feedback form, was a contact and and me collab. Actually, I was running some of the uh, the AI side of it, and he did the did the initial like shaping of, of the picture. So that was fun. And then the server booster badge was me and Thrax, and Thrax an animated that right at the end there, and it is blinging. So some cool drops, some cool drops coming this way. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I kept on checking my uh, hidden hidden section oh. on OpenSea. I was like, "Oh, where is that?" So I heard I was I thought I was getting something. That's good to know. Thank you guys. That was not a uh, not needed or required, but it's uh, very very grateful and much appreciated. So thank y'all. Oh yeah. I hope you like it when it gets to the wallet. It was fun to make, and I wanted to do something cool for you guys. So that's no, awesome. And made I sure there were some my bonuses. mom today. Because, oh nice. Uh, Somebody was like, it was Rigo J. Mortis. He was like, go see your mom. You know, it sounds like a Rigo thing. Yeah. 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 I was like, okay, I'm going to go hang out with my mom for a second just because uh, Rigo J. Mortis sets up. Perfect. She was appreciative. Sure. And my parents came up, uh, my parents and my aunt and uncle and my little brother came up on Friday to visit me. Uh, second time since I moved in. So it was kind of cool. And we got to drive around the area and check out a lot of. A lot of cool places. We've got fall coming here in northern Michigan, so the leaves are starting to change colors, and it was just a fun scenic trip. So nice. Are you a youper? I'm northern lower Michigan. Okay. Northwest. Yeah. I know a couple youpers. <laughs> I have. I think I've been up there one time. I was just a small cool. kid. I haven't been up there in a long time, but I bet I would love it. As long as you got internet yeah, access. Michigan's pretty cool. Cool, cool. <laughs> I like it here. I don't. I have no plans to leave the state especially with, you know, the way freshwater is looking for the next hundred years. We got some. <laughs> I'm going to stay by it. <laughs> yeah, I got salt water, so I may have to bust a move here soon. If you could come across some free energy, you'll be okay. But Hey, that's called winds, right? Wind, waves, solar. Well, yeah. free-ish. But yeah, that's the thing. They've got like desalination plants all down the West Coast built but they're just not on because it's so expensive to run them. Yeah, they're trying to put one here uh, locally, right across from where I, the city is. They're trying to do a big uh, offshore oil terminal and all sorts of uh, big, big oh, industry. Wow. 
and we're like a tourist destination. So the town's pretty up against it. Understandably. So, oh yeah. Especially oil terminal. Yeah. That's going to mess up the beach. Like, like, the- Oh yeah. One, one big hurricane and uh, all those tanks <laughs> spill out. I mean, not even that, just the doing it at all raise puts so much silt up in the water. Like it just becomes yeah. instantly dirty water. Like, that's yeah. what happened to Lake Pontchartrain here in New Orleans. Like they were, I think it was in the seventies, late seventies, early eighties. They started drilling in the lake, and within a few years, the lake was unswimmable. And basically, people Ooh. still don't swim in the lake, and they stopped doing that, you know, forever ago. And we still don't go in the lake. Yikes! Yeah, yeah, I, I've been there on that at that marina, Lake Pontchartrain, a few times. Few times. Cool. <laughs> Before it got Katrina. Yeah, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Pre Katrina was nice. You rode the boat yeah. all the way out here or what? Yeah, yeah, I've been on I've been there twice to New Orleans. Uh one time crossing the Gulf, like our first Gulf crossing in two thousand one. We uh ran into Tropical Storm Allison and <laughs> uh had to go up to Chafalaya River Basin, Morgan City, Homa, the whole intercoastal. Oh that's and then cool. uh spent a day over there in New Orleans and then the other time I was coming in, uh, we were trying to cross the Gulf and we ran out of gas. So I'd be coming to get more gas because <laughs> there was like no wind out there at all. And we were sitting out there for like four days in the doldrums. Just like, all right. Oh, and we ran out of gas, actually, like totally out of gas. It was all right. We made it. <laughs> we had to come like nine, uh, bow to bow with this 90 foot oil, um, platform supply ship and they gave us 20 gallons of gas from their pressure washer it was like dead calm out there it was a lake and we were like 200 miles offshore zero gas like we were just sitting Ooh. out there playing risk just like sitting for days <laughs> oh, like this sucks man. which is fun and all but you know there's only a limited amount of food and water and <laughs> yeah people have schedules and i'm like yeah we should Shit. probably not sit out here for another four days like <laughs> and we started motoring and we ran out of gas so we're like We'll be all right. We'll find something. Somebody's got some gas out here. We made Good it. find then. Good find. But yeah, I've never made it straight across going east across the Gulf. I've always had to go into New Orleans. But coming from Florida back here, I've made it twice straight across. So Nice. Well, if you ever decide to go all the way across and then up and around and then through the St. Lawrence Seaway and then back down through the Great Lakes... Dude, and then into like Lake Michigan. Year, I'm going to be, I'm trying to really go full electric on the boat. Um, cool. Go fully green. I've got two little gas, 10 horsepower engines right now that I'm using. It's pretty fuel efficient, but I would like to be able to just like not ever need gas again. Oh, or for sure. have to come in the dock or plug in the shore power. So that's a big boat. You got system. plenty of surface, plenty of surface yeah. space for solar panels and all that. Oh yeah. I've got lots of room and that boat's a blatant canvas. So just just paid another year of slip rent up in, in advance so i'm all paid up here for a year but after that i don't think i want to spend another year here with hurricane risk and all that do you live on the boat um no not right now i have but yeah not really comfortable to live on it's no like hot water not a shower it's very camp out which that's legit i mean yeah. it's okay Sleeping for cabin. a little bit you know but much longer than a week or two you're like okay Air conditioning. Yeah. Kind of a landlubber. That makes sense. <laughs> hey, T-Bird, I saw your art that you were putting up on uh, Lens. Yeah, I've been fucking around in the Adobe Fresco. It's a really fun program. I'm a I don't know fan. if you all use it at all, but it's really easy to animate. And, uh, I've been trying to draw a little bit because I've always been... I've never really practiced at drawing, and it's always kind of been... A skill I wanted to do, but you know, just try to do my own thing and whatever. That's legit. I like that. Yeah, there's that a is really cool. There's one that looks like a an electric neon bunt cake. Gosh, he's like <laughs> going in an infinity circle. Do you know the uh-huh. one I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. like that one a lot. <laughs> I think I collected that one. Yeah, I got two of you them. You too. I got that one. No, I appreciate I that, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep making cool stuff. I'll keep throwing Matic at it. Yeah, I will. And actually, there's like a, <laughs> if any of y'all else that like have the creative cloud, there's a way where we can actually collaborate on pieces through Fresco, I believe. Oh, cool. Like you can invite invite people to a project and like, so it could be a cool thing because I, I know y'all are doing collabs and stuff like that. And 
I haven't really had anybody work on a project or like a piece with me, but I'm totally down to like, whatever, no expectations. But Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I don't have the cloud, but that does sound pretty awesome. There is a free version of Fresco. And then I think you can pay for the paid version and it's got like 20,000 brushes you can download. Shit. Like it's crazy. There's this guy, Kyle Webster. He's on Twitter. He's like a big time animator. I don't know if y'all know him or illustrator. Kyle T. Webster. I'll post his link. That sounds familiar. He's the one who yeah. Took... yeah, he's like really awesome. If he made some Avogadro stuff, it would be crazy. Did you guys catch the uh, the Mosaic Tile art competition winners? Yeah, that was some fire art in there. Oh yeah, some cool stuff. Some shady shenanigans. I was like, no, I'm not even submitting. <laughs> oh yeah, I threw some in there. <laughs> I should have looking because like, I had a couple cool pieces. I just been like, I mean, they weren't like art per se. They were just decorated, you know, like. And I saw yeah. after seeing what else was submitted, I'm like, damn, I should have submitted a few just for the hell of it. But I'm surprised how few entries there were. Yeah, I should have submitted. Sure. And what do you think about if we were to do this again? What would you think about splitting the competition into tiers based on parcel size? I saw there were some comments of like, hey, we should separate this and maybe give the reasonables a chance against the spacious and give the humbles a chance if they have a clever design. Any thoughts? Yeah. It's- that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think, think I, so. I think I'd support it. I mean, someone did make a comment replying to that at the time saying whales would still get it by multiple parcel designs because you could always do like three reasonables and still do something better than somebody who has one. Because mm. you'd have to have three in a row. That's over true. Over. But the the ability, like what you're capable of, of drawing with a two by two tile on a reasonable oh, yeah. is pretty restricted, pretty limited. For sure. I mean, mine was supposed to be, one of them was supposed to be a raffle eating my avogachi and everybody was like, Oh, it looks like a zombie with dreadlocks. <laughs> I'm like, yes, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> uh, gravy actually got it was one a zombie of with pretty dreadlocks. good though. Cause it was, uh, it was two Avogachis laying head to head, looking up at the stars. And he was like, oh yeah, I see. Like he called it. I was like, that's it. You got it. Do you have pictures? I want to see pictures. Uh, yeah, yeah. I got a picture. It looks like they only posted the winners here, not all the submissions. I'd have to dig through the Discord. I've definitely got pictures because I had to submit them. <laughs> I was a big fan of the snack. All right. In the chat. They did put all of them in here. Oh, yeah. I remember when he was talking about that one. He was like, is that a Roth or uh, the first one there? Yeah, it's very hard to like make a super solid design. With a humble or reasonable, I think. I mean, yeah, the green one was supposed to be like all the avogachi surrounding the raffle that's eating the one, but it just ended up looking like a zombie with braids. <laughs> that's what I thought it was, and it was cool. <laughs> nope. What, but the second one. The second one is. That's two Avogachis like laying down, looking up, with their heads facing opposite directions. Gotcha. And just one of their eyes. Right. You're just seeing the very yeah. corner of their eyes. Yeah. Okay. Huh. <laughs> I see it now. Looking yeah. at the star field. <laughs> That's actually interesting piece of Avogachi lore I'd like to know. If the star field is under us, then what the hell's up? Only. 
<laughs> Token price. Token up price. only. <laughs> We're in the upside down. It's uh, Stranger Things, I guess. Right? Everything's upside down. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, the progression of how the perspective of the viewer of the gotcha verse changes. I'm really excited about that. Actually. I love the 2d thing, but I think it's going to be next. 3d is going to be a game changer. Yeah. 3d and uh, VR. Yeah. It's I'm not in a hurry, but like, I just, cause I want it to be done well, you know, obviously Agreed. Sure too. that's what I love about Avogadro. Like, it's just slow and steady. It's not it's rushed to put time. out MVP all the time. It's rushed to put out quality VP. I got a phone call. Sorry. Well, see, Goobs is here too. Thanks for coming, Wayne. Yeah, so I just pulled up the Dow Miro board. Just going to drop a few of these hot topics here. Obviously, we got the Governor Dow thing trying to get rid of the bots. I don't know if you have anything to say about that. It sounds interesting. Um, it's basically like proof of humanity based on your face, and they're saying that it can't be faked, um, that it would know the difference between twins, but it would also know the difference between you with a beard. So that's that's interesting to be able to tell that kind of a precise difference. I guess facial recognition is getting pretty damn good, though. So um, it wouldn't exactly stop transferring a wallet like or you like going to get your mom to give you her face or getting other people to set accounts up for you. I see. Yeah. It wouldn't stop something like that, but um, you would still, in order to be an effective botter, have to have hundreds of people give you their faces. <laughs> so it's still a pretty good deterrent. Um, Especially if there's ever a check-in point, like, oh, hey, can you just double-check your face? <laughs> and, and then you got to call up your aunt who lives three states away. I need your face. <laughs> yep, yep. Interesting. I need you to. They need you to call and hold up the news. Hold up tomorrow's newspaper, and uh, it's got to be from the future. That's right. <laughs> put, a, put a phone up to a, a tablet. Do a FaceTime. Oh, loan remotely. Goobs had to go. What is womp this womp. Avogadro Dow tooling discussion? Don't miss the call in 13 hours on YouTube. Huh. What's that for? Gachi Dow tooling options with our friends at DWork. So this is 9.30. Wait, don't we have... Oh, that's Thursday. I was about to say, don't we have another thing? So tomorrow... Thanks for dropping this, Goops. Um, tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. for me. Uh, so that would be 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Um... So what's that? 3.30 p.m. UTC? If it's 10.30 p.m. Oh, Eastern, it'll be 2.30 p.m. Yeah. 2.30 p.m. UTC, Avogadro Dow tooling discussion with DWork. DWork is a pretty good program, pretty good tooling solution. I don't think it's a protocol. I think it's a, or maybe it is. I don't know. It's a uh, platform, I guess. It's a bounty platform. Yep. I have used Workflow it management. Bit pretty good stuff so we'll see how that's gonna work um that actually is kind of cool because depending on what they're using it for um it could work for like content creation for instance we have an av guild meeting at that time son of a beaster um I mean, we have an AV guild meeting half an hour before that time, so <laughs> we gotta go, friends. Like, LOL. Yeah. All right, y'all. Let's get this meeting going. <laughs> LFG. <laughs> uh, That's fucking gotchi. <laughs> <laughs> I saved all those clips. Too good. Uh, well, it's gonna be on YouTube, so we'll miss it live, but we can watch it after. We'll just catch the recording. No yeah. worries there. No point in being there unless we're going to have actual questions to ask. Um, I suppose that's fair. Yep. But 
I actually the the guy who made D work actually DM me about a week ago anyway to ask me some questions. So I could always just if we have specific questions, I will DM the guy from D work. He's in the DMs. <laughs> Can't beat that. <laughs> Can't beat that. What else did you find on the uh the mural board? What else Keep is cool? Some what else decorations is pop? mintable forever? This one is uh this one is a bit was a bit mixed bag. There were some people that's like this is inflation. There were other people saying that this is a good sink. Um Some people were saying these tiles should be able to be used like paint, but then others were saying there should just be a one there should be a plain tile that you can mint all the time. Um, I mean, like a pixel color, essentially. I mean, if we were going to do that, if we were going to do a plain tile, I would think that you need like black. I, I don't, you know what I mean? Like what else is a plain tile in the gotcha verse? The only thing I would want is actual negative space. If we were going that, I wouldn't want white. You can do negative space right now as is if you turn off the star field. That's true, but it's not negative space for other people. So if I want my parcel, oh, you'd have to share way, a screenshot. Yeah, right. I I can't make you turn off your star field. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, you could, but I wrote a program that turns off your star field. <laughs> it's a virus. That's all it does. It just turns it off, so that my heart looks good. <laughs> no worries. And it replaces your music with mine. <laughs> yeah. Because of laws. Well, that's because I got Apple and you two to help me out. Uh <laughs> you will own the U2 album. You you're don't have know. a choice. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna know when U2 gets into Great. NFTs because <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna have a one. soulbound U2 album. <laughs> Oh my god. Yep. That's the last thing we need is like man, Nickelback airdropping us songs we don't want. <laughs> I think I'm gonna call up the rug and give them that joke. <laughs> Do it. They'll print it. They'll print it. Alright, so we got mintable forever decorations. That sounds eh. Yeah. Lots of discussion I could see it coming out of that. Yeah. I don't I don't, I don't feel like I need that. I don't know how I feel. I mean, they're saying it's a good sink, but I uh, don't know. A waste yeah, of mean, time and effort and yep. yeah, I'm like, just they're not expensive. Mm -hmm. You want to go buy a tile, go buy a tile. They're like a ghost. Right. Exactly. I mean, and Dan like, did like have one up. idea. He said something about speeding up tiles, like a conveyor belt. Like, so, and I guess the, the, that would be only work on a spacious, really, because who else needs a conveyor belt to get on their across their land? <laughs> and we can already sprint, so I don't know. Right. You can collectively guess... build a new road. You know, if you've got a bunch of parcels or a lot of DAO supporting DAO votes, you could potentially build a neighborhood road. If you bought up a large section and turned it into an estate, those tiles might be cool because now you've yes. got private roads. Yes. I think that's what they're thinking. Estates are coming. That's cool. So, yeah, I don't know about the tiles, but um, new wearable set initial voting. So they're talking about potential mm. new wearables, even though we turned off wearables. But we've also had the numbers come out that we're saying that we could support lower tier wearables. I think it was anything below legendary, maybe even up to legendary. Um, I don't know. You see any of these are, that are interesting? Oh, Rave Guru. That's interesting. I was looking at that. <laughs> so there's already like set themes. They have a whole right. list of themes here. Rainbow Punker, Rainbow Thrasher, Rave Guru, Twitch Streamer, Squat Enjoyer. Christmas Spirit, Super Soldier, Captain Charisma. Men in Black or Suit. Ooh, I'd get that one. All sets, please. No new sets, please. Mecha Dragon, After Party Lumberjack, Party Lumberjack. <laughs> Pandemic Survivor. What, what does that mean? 
what is a pandemic survivor? <laughs> no, maybe there'd be like a mask. Something. There's definitely some on here that I would thumb down. Swipe left. <laughs> Swiping crap. Bunch of nopes on this list. There's some winners. Yeah, I'm not with Boss Baby. Let's not do that nope. one. Nope. Party Lumberjack. I don't know. Some of these seem a little bit like derivative. Like we've already done some of this. Or Yeah, like the Lumberjack it? shirt already exists, doesn't it? The red plaid or the red flannel or whatever. That already is out there. Right. And like, or, okay, so also they didn't really get into this, but I'm wondering if some of these would involve adding new wearables to make new combinations with old wearables. I had that thought looking at Rainbow Punker and Rainbow Thrasher. Right. Maybe they're just talking about repurposing a couple of existing wearables, but making new sets by adding two or maybe a piece. I guess we need, need more oh, information on that. Okay, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at this chart down here. It looks like these would literally be... Oh, there's a chart. Yes. These are new sets made from old wearables, basically lending new BRS maybe to new, you know, different bonuses to different sets. And it could be that this is also like a way of respecking and still retaining BRS. Because say if you like had a gachi in which like the wizard set didn't work, then maybe some like alternate version of the wizard set would work. I see. I like that. Okay. I mean, that's kind of interesting because for instance, like, uh, I guess, oh, pets aren't parts of sets anyway, but like, I can't really, on neither of my gachis can I use a raffle at all. Like, they don't work. What's the bonus on a raffle? I don't remember, but I think it's like, it might be negative, it might be negative brain. Looks like it's either negative brain or negative energy. I'm pretty sure it's negative brain. Cool. Pretty sure. I could use that on a couple, I think. I tried to select my gachis in such a way that I have extremes on all traits. So, like, somewhere in my pile of gachis, I have both a very high energy and a very low energy. So that if I need to switch for certain, you know, quest-based things, I can get a gachi that has the, the, stats, the specs and stats that I need. Yeah, all very both well of my gachis are pretty much the same, except one is negative one aggression, like, out the portal. And then the other one has, like a mid-range aggression but other than that they're like pretty much the same big brain middle spooky uh yeah very similar <laughs> uh they both work with a wizard set <laughs> matter of fact i want to upgrade Bo oh bobby i want to upgrade to the full fave set and then pass my wizard set on to um, there you go. other guys. And hand me down, stack them up. Yep, yep. I was so looking I at wearables today. I have a suit. I just need the hammer and the, and the helmet. Things are getting cheap. Things are getting almost like viciously cheap. Yeah. Concerningly cheap. I know. I've been so watching. I've been I watching. should be scooping wearables. If I can get a good I can't justify any ghost spending right now other than Alchemica because of all the art coming down the line. So I'm like blue balling my liquidity here because I need fake gachis more than I need to dress my digital dolls. You know what I mean? I'm waiting for art. <laughs> yeah, this and then gameplay. Cool. Prices are getting low, man. I haven't even looked. I don't even know. Where are we at? $1. Common $1. floors $1. are under 10. 13, 1400 ghosts for the lowest. It's pretty low, man. Like, I thought I got my beer helmet low at like 3,500 ghosts way back in the day. <laughs> now it's 29.99 or 2,999, 3,000 ghosts. So 
hasn't dropped that much, but used to not be able to get a mythical for like under 2000 ghosts. Like. And I think that's why Dr. Wagme was saying that like, if we did open up new wearables, then it would be for anything under Maybe. definitely under mythical, but possibly under legendary as well. So some interesting sets there. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what comes of that discussion. Um, we got about thirteen minutes left. I do have a hard stop on this one. Um, Can I yeah. jump in with the DAO proposal then, or the snapshot proposal? Yeah. All right. So there is, and actually, I think someone's on it. Whoever visiting Trailblazer is is right on this. This came out of the DAO discussion this week. The DAO is requesting Alchemica and Parcels to use as contributor contribution or contributor compensation. So on Snapshot currently, there is a live, I don't think it's an XP earning one, at least not yet, but there is one live proposal. Mint and transfer 50 DAO parcels and 4 million FUD equivalent of Alchemica to the DTF. So check that out. You know, we've got four days left. Um, Give it a read, see what you think, vote accordingly. Yeah, I think this is an like interesting one. Um, because, you know, there were some people arguing that, like, why are we giving these out? And then, you know, are they just going to dump them on the market? And Hefe was like, I don't know. I think the people who would get these parcels are people who care. They wouldn't be getting these for nothing. These, these would be, like, really good contributors. And having these parcels, you're probably putting them into the best hands of the people, the people who are willing to work for the DAO yes. for basically nothing or nothing. <laughs> um, and if they're agreeing to it, if they're agreeing to be funded for their project or whatever ahead of time in a parcel, this may be a way for people who don't own any assets yet to start building and start getting into the actual game. So I, don't know, I see both sides of it. Right. And I would think if you had a DAO parcel, if you were going to sell it, you would probably sell it to somebody that it go it should get it. You probably wouldn't just put it on the bazaar and be like, all right, roll the dice on that. You'd probably, you know, reach out to somebody from GMI and be like, hey, I, I got to get off my DAO parcel. Does anybody want it? Like, <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah. Make make a OTC trade, something like that. Right. With That's somebody legit. that you know would care about it. Or, you know, for that matter, if someone really, really had to sell it, why not sell it back to the DAO? That's true, too. That's probably... I know that I would accept Alchemica. I would accept Alchemica as compensation because I have a whole bunch of it that I have to spend, like thousands of dollars worth of queued up buy orders for... Or not buy orders, but like shopping list items of... I get my farm leveled. I got to do this. I got to get NFT displays. NFT displays are going to kill me up front. Like just to get 12 of them, 12 four by four basics, like 250 bucks. Damn. So I'm going to spend it anyway. I would accept payment in Alchemica. I don't know about parcels. I'm pretty parcel heavy and stretched way too thin. Well, you don't need to get all your displays at once. You ape. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. 25 is nowhere near it. All of them. That's like, or 12. 12 is nowhere near all of them. 12 is not even enough to like complete the list for one estate. I have, I will be buying many dozens. This is going to change my whole arrangement <laughs> in District 4. For sure. This is going to change my whole arrangement in District 4. Like, I'm going to have to move my, make it look totally different. Uh, you could, you could leave the background pattern and center it like up front. How big of an NFT display are you thinking? I think I'm going to do the 8x8. Eight eight. And I mean, I don't know. The way mine is set up, I may even just like take my golden tile. Oh, no, I can't do that because of where I have my reservoirs. I was going to say take my golden tile oh. out and just put the NFT display smack in the middle. But I would That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I, might, I would have to move my reservoirs, but that's not exactly a problem. I could, you know, make that part of it. But yeah, yeah I think uh, taking up the grass and the golden tile and you know totally redo redo it or what i could do is i think with the eight by eight i would still be able to no either way no matter what if i want to put an eight by eight i got to move the reservoirs in any 
shape because I got that X pattern going where it's like they're smack in the middle of the floor. Right, right. I got to show you what I made. I'm still waiting on some green tiles. I won some green mosaic tiles uh, last week. Gachi Mafia poker game. That was fun. I actually got my shit together this week or last week. The week before I was first out like early wrecked. But this time around, I got some green tiles coming my way, and I'm going to make a forest in District 14. So I'm getting a screenshot here of what I've got so far. Pretty much done. I just need to fill in some gaps. Shit. Drop it into chat here. Nice. Up and the plan up. was, the plan was all across to the northern border, which is a roadside. I was going to completely cover it in 4x4 NFT displays. 20 NFT displays. So even the 12 that I have budgeted outside of my budget is nowhere near enough. <laughs> oh, so these arrows are pointing to the NFT display? They weren't supposed to. These are supposed to be trees. And once I get the other remaining tiles that I need, I can fill them in. But it's supposed to be a forest full of ghosts. It's a haunted forest. And then I was going to have NFTs all across the top. You see? You did the, the ghost tiles as, as Avogachis. That's what I did in my part in my design. You're thinking the same way I was when I made my zombie with dreadlocks. <laughs> yeah, they're like actual gachis. <laughs> right. Cool. I don't know. I'm looking at it right now going, man, I fucking bought tiles for this. <laughs> 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 we'll see. The NFT displays will help. Maybe I'll put one on each parcel to start and call it good. There's one glowing, like right in the center of the group, is one altar, but it's just a level one. I saw that. These are my cheapy scoops. Don't have a plan for them. So I figured plant some trees and they'll be nice later. So speaking of wearables, um, Mikey J made this awesome market dashboard chart that just has like really in-depth information on everything. Volume, prices, supply, usage. It wow. is pretty comprehensive. And Where do we get that? You, it's here on the Miro board, uh, but I'm sure there's other links to it. I know in the DTF server, I think he linked it. Um, but yeah, I think this is most of the information here on the Miro board anyway, but really good stuff. Like probably any question you wanted to figure out, you could find here. There was only a, a few things he said he couldn't figure out. Um, I forget what that was now. But he did ask Coder Dan. I think they said they could possibly get him that information. So maybe we'll see an update coming. Um, yeah, I really, I haven't been through this totally, like looking through the whole thing. But I did notice here at the bottom, it shows you like how equipping has changed from season to season of rarity farming. And you can actually see rarity more, farming more. engagement going up every season. Yeah. yeah. Competition. Yep. In the first season, only 35% of common wearables had participated. Or no, this is by slots. Interesting. I think there was another one that was... I thought... Maybe I'm tripping. I thought there was another one that was by tier, but this is by slot. Interesting. Oh, I see volume by rarity on here. Yeah, I probably just didn't scroll to it quick enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. There it this is, is great data. Below the uh, slots. Yeah, you can see it there. That was particularly, that's what it was. If you see the common at 21% equip rate in season one, up to 39% in season four. So that's, you know, damn near a 50% increase 
in commons and god likes only went up nine percent from season one but up means more people are participating and i think that's probably what they're looking for is like active participation metrics right if right. you're actively if you know enough to go in and change the clothes on your gachi to participate in rarity farming then you're an active member an active but what's interesting player. is i think yeah, yeah, Z no growth at all in the godlike between season three and season four. They're all equipped. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? <laughs> right, like 94, 110, 85% on both season three and season four. But you can see marginal growth in every other tier. Friendly PSA, pet your gachis, drink some water interesting i wonder that that'll be really interesting to see after season five if god likes shift at all um which i don't honestly i i might think we would see it shift down before up because after fate gotchis um or it might just stay the same but after fate gotchis there's no like fake gotchis should have increased something especially with so what was it that fell in and diamond hands or who was the other person that was at the end diamond eyes i don't know there were two people that were like top of the leaderboard for the end of rarity farming season four for the fake gachi snapshot and fell and took it um but mm. they were battling back and forth you know i think whoever the other person had taken the lead for the maybe season three or the part three uh week three of rarity farming season four but then fell and stole it in the final snapshot he must have a bag of like the best wearables so clearly it wasn't godlikes that changed it it was shifting something else that was the competition or if they were unequipping godlikes they were re-equipping them to someone else so it looks as if they never moved do you see my cat being desperate <laughs> she wants me to pet her so bad <laughs> all right well you know what it is nine o'clock and i have to go to the polygons all right so well good call good coverage hell yeah Lots going on. Good Thanks evening. for coming out. Bowtie, T-Bird. What's up, Bowtie? Goobs, because he's going to catch the rest of the recording. Goobs was here. Dropped the D-work on us. Yeah, man. Buckle up, friends. October is going to be shippy. Oh, yeah. I guess there's I some stuff some coming. <laughs> last minute shills. I'll have another Halloween. Slide it in. Do it. Another Halloween post coming on Lens. What else? Oh, yeah, shit, the big important one. Tomorrow, the Click Podcast with uh, Abhishek is the host from the Click, and uh, it'll be No Futuristic, Mycalium, and myself being interviewed by Abhishek. So I think, I think that's going to happen on Twitter, so be paying attention about noon Eastern time, 11 a.m. Central. And if Mara? not... It definitely, we're recording in Zoom, so we should have a YouTube oh, good. episode coming out following that. So yeah, if you can't make it to the Twitter spaces or whatever it is, I'm pretty sure there's a Twitter spaces. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'll see you soon. Sounds good. Bye, friends. Bye, friends. <laughs>